Hello, I'm Derek, and I'm here to talk to you about VA examinations for Parkinson's disease. First, I will review the symptoms of Parkinson's disease and explain getting service connection. Then, I will go over the regulations that determine the ratings of Parkinson's disease. Finally, I will review a DBQ to prepare you for an examination. DBQ means Disability Benefits Questionnaire, and it is the form the examiner provides the VA to help determine the rating of a condition. Parkinson's disease is a neurological disease. There are many possible symptoms, but some of the more common symptoms are tremors, poor balance, and rigidity. It is also commonly associated with sleep disturbances, urinary dysfunction, constipation, and cognitive deficits. Parkinson's disease can be service-connected on a direct basis if it started in service. Additionally, it can be service-connected on a secondary basis if it is related to other service-connected conditions. One condition to consider is a traumatic brain injury due to research linking the two conditions. Additionally, there is research to support service connection between chemical exposure and Parkinson's disease. Consider if you have had exposure to TCE, like what was at Camp Lejeune, or so-called forever chemicals such as PFAS. Finally, there is presumptive service connection given to veterans exposed to Agent Orange. Additionally, the VA expanded service connection to veterans suffering from Parkinson-like symptoms in 2021. So it does not require an outright diagnosis of Parkinson's disease to be eligible for service connection. Parkinson's disease could lead to secondary service-connected conditions because it may impact other symptoms of the body. Some conditions that may be secondary to Parkinson's disease are hypertension, ischemic heart disease, stroke, injuries from falling, anxiety, depression, gastrointestinal issues, and sleep apnea. It is best to file for other conditions that may be a result of Parkinson's disease to make sure you are compensated for those conditions. Also, if Parkinson's disease and its residual conditions cause you to be unable to work, you should file total disability and individual unemployability. Finally, you may be eligible for special monthly compensation, or SMC, for stages of Parkinson's disease that cause you to be housebound or require aid in attendance. SMC is also available for loss of use of hands or loss of vision and other conditions. All of these conditions should be submitted in an application or included on any appeal. 38 CFR section 4.124A Diagnostic Code 8004 is the regulation that defines how Parkinson's disease is rated. A minimum rating of 30% is given there under paralysis agitans. However, the VA may also analyze individual symptoms and give ratings for those under the appropriate diagnostic codes. Walking through the DBQ, on page one, the examiner fills it out based on the request from the VA. The diagnosis section is also on this page. The dominant hand is important because certain conditions get higher ratings if it affects your dominant hand. On page two, Section 3 has motor manifestations of Parkinson's disease, such as stooped posture and balance impairments. It also has areas to cover tremors and muscle rigidity and stiffness. Section 4 reviews mental manifestations. If these are checked, the VA should request an additional examination from mental health professionals to rate them. Section 5 addresses symptoms not in the sections above. Sections here that could lead to additional ratings include loss of sense of smell sleep disturbances, incontinence, and sexual dysfunction. Section 6 addresses your ability to manage your financial affairs. So long as this is checked in the affirmative, you will still receive your own compensation checks. However, if it is found that you cannot manage your financial affairs, the VA will require a responsible party to be put in place to manage checks from the VA. Section 7 addresses your ability to work, this section, like others, should trigger the VA automatically to address the question in terms of other ratings, but it is always safer for veterans to file for these conditions. However, if the box is checked and the VA did not address your employability, you may have an appeal with the VA to address their failure. That wraps up this video. For more information, click on the links below this video. Remember to like and subscribe for more content from VA Disability Group about your VA benefits.